Hi, this is Micah Yoder, and I just wanted to discuss a little bit how you might go about choosing which data store to use for your next web application. Now, there are three main contenders that I would consider would be good choices today for most web applications. There are two SQL options. There's MySQL and PostgreSQL. Now, MySQL is, is widely known, and, and PostgreSQL also uses a similar language, so it's, it's widely known also. Uh, MongoDB is the main NoSQL contender that we're going to consider today and it has some advantages as well. Now, how, how do you go about deciding between these options? Uh, they all have pros and cons. Well, you need to ask yourself a lot of questions, and, and we're going to go through those. We're going to go through those and help you decide today. So I hope you enjoy it. Now, first I would note that it's, it's very important to decide carefully because you could live with your decision for a long time. After your application grows, it could be pretty difficult to change. And also, it's important to remember that it doesn't, it's not necessary to have all your data in one database. If, if one database works well for a, a subset of your data and a different database works well for a different subset, the, the rest of your data, then fine. That's, that's totally okay. Put them in separate databases. Access them separately. Uh, you'll get some benefits from that anyway, such as less I.O. contention, and you'll be able to spread your resources and load out a little bit more. So, yeah. Now, I'll say up front now that I think my default choice for a new database, for a new web application, would be MongoDB. And there are a couple reasons for that. Number one, it's schemaless design. It allows you to grow your application organically. You don't have to plan everything out in advance. If you want to add a new feature, it's, it's easy to add a new field to your database. And second, it's easy to configure replica sets, uh, much easier than, than, say, in SQL databases. And they also fail over automatically. So I think MongoDB has done a really good job in making administration of this kind of thing simple. Now, now the first thing I would ask myself is, what is the nature of the data itself? What is the data like? Now, if, you're, if you have a typical web application that stores maybe forum posts or blog posts or, you know, web content, like, in, like a page that displays a web article with a bunch of tags and attributes and that kind of thing, I think uh, MongoDB would actually be a very good fit for that, probably better than SQL. Now, on the other hand, if you have a lot of numeric data, and not necessarily a lot of textual data, but it's all numeric and you need to do a lot of numeric processing on it and aggregations and all that, then, then SQL is probably better. Now, MongoDB does have a pretty good aggregation framework, but, but overall, if, it's, if you're using a whole lot of numeric data, I would, that would be a, a big point in favor of SQL. The first major question you need, you need to ask yourself is, how is the data updated? Now let's, let's look at a little example that compares SQL and MongoDB. In SQL, say, say you have three documents here that are separate records in the database. Uh, now they have the same types of data, so they're logically they're the same type of thing, but they're not the same container. They're different data points. They're, they're different parts of the database. Uh, you can update all these atomically. So you can say you want to add something like this to these records, and if you do more or less the same thing to each record, then that's going to succeed or it's all going to fail. That's what atomicity means. So SQL allows you to do that without worry of corruption. Now MongoDB can only update one document at a time. Now let's see say this is a document this is all this is all one document it's all one container one one thing in the database now what you can do in mongodb is you can say take this away and add this in one atomic operation now you could not do this to uh, different parts of the database like different different containers different documents this all has to represent one thing like one web article or whatever as opposed to sql you can do multiple similar updates to similar types of data that are not necessarily the same. Now another thing to consider is that SQL tends to allow higher, a higher rate of inserts than MongoDB, but that only applies if you're doing a crazy amount of data like thousands of records per second. If you're not at that point, I think you don't need to rule out MongoDB in that regard. Now the next thing you want to ask yourself is how is the data read and how is it organized? Now let's let's take the example of a medical practice where you have records for your uh, use for your patients and records for appointments. Now in SQL, if you want to retrieve a record for your patient with all with all his appointments, then you'll need to select out of the 
the patient's table and you'll need to do another selection like select the appointments where user ID or where a patient ID equals whatever this is and so you'll need at least two queries and if there's other kinds of things you want to pull up you might need more queries but let's, let's see how MongoDB might do that in MongoDB you might have one document representing a, a patient and inside that document you can have an array of appointments so you can just select this rec select this patient and all the appointments come in with it just one query and that's it now that works whenever there is a one-to-many relationship yeah, uh, MongoDB does let you embed documents like that and that that works well when when the data is a one-to-many relationship now if it's many-to-many -many or one-to-one -one, it might not work so well so and also keep in mind that MongoDB does have a, a, a 16 megabyte per, uh, limit per document and I, I don't think that would be a limitation in an application like this but you need to be aware of it because it can certainly be a limiting factor in some cases another question you should ask yourself is what kind of access controls do you need now MongoDB has a fairly limited user model it does have users but each user has read or read write access on a per database level, not on a per uh, column level or table level. Now SQL on the other hand allows you to grant this user read or write or update or delete access on specific tables and and even columns so it's much more fine-grained. Now, now almost no application, almost no web application actually uses these fine-grained access controls. Pretty much every web application I've seen just has it where you where the web application has access to a database user that has full privileges on the, the appropriate database. And I think that's bad practice. What you should do, or think about doing, is have an admin side and a user side where they're firewalled off, so the, the admin side is has its own web server or its own port, and it has access to a database user that has full read-write read -write access to everything, and the user side would have access to a database user with more limited functionality so like he like for example the user side might not be able to delete an account but the admin side can so that's something to think about all right well the last major question I think you need to ask yourself when choosing a database for your web application is how important is documentation and community support now, I would tend to say that, my, that uh, PostgreSQL and MongoDB both have very excellent online documentation on their website. Uh, MySQL is also pretty good, but I'm a little less thrilled with it than I am with PostgreSQL and uh, MongoDBs. Now, MySQL, on the other hand, does have a lot more books and a lot more knowledgeable developers out, out there for, that you can hire. So, that, so if, especially if you're looking to hire a lot of talent in your local area, that would be worth considering. Uh, MongoDB is definitely getting there, and so is Postgres, but yeah, MySQL has the edge in developer mindshare at the moment. So if you're choosing an SQL database, which one would you choose? Which, which is the best option for you? Uh, I personally believe that Postgres is overall the better option. It, it has a very long track record of stability and reliability. Its documentation is excellent, and it just has a whole lot of features that could be very useful. Now MySQL is also very capable. Uh, it has gotten some flack in earlier years for for uh, treating reliability for speed, but that's not really the case anymore. It is very capable. There might be a little bit of concern about Oracle's long-term commitment to it, but and and also you have forks like MariaDB and Drizzle and uh, Percona Server that are going in slightly different directions. Uh, and Postgres doesn't have that issue, but overall either is a great choice. But uh, to go back to the beginning of this this program, I would tend to say MongoDB is an excellent default if, if I have not convinced you to use SQL. If I have convinced you to use SQL, I would lean toward Postgres unless unless uh, developer mindshare is important to you. So there you have it for the main three contenders, MySQL, PostgreSQL, and MongoDB. Now you might also wonder about Cassandra or HBase or Couchbase or some of those other new SQL servers. And yeah, those those are somewhat specialized and they do have their uses and I hope to cover them more in future videos. But for now I hope this helps you decide between the main three. Thank you.